unmuted. Good morning, everyone. Welcome to October CBA Fiscal Connections Quarterly Webinar. My name is Janine Fenton, the Chief Deputy Director here at CBA, and I'm joined today by Vern Foster, who is one of the Program Fiscal Team Analysts, and Del Corrado Kuroda, sorry, who is the Fiscal Operations Branch Chief. The CDA Fiscal Connections Quarterly Webinar Series is focused on timely, relevant fiscal information, and we are thrilled you have joined us today. These webinars are provided by CDA as a means to share information on current fiscal issues, provide technical guidance for effective fiscal management of our programs, and offer an open forum to discuss current fiscal concerns and topics with you, our fiscal partners. Today's webinar was developed using the feedback we received from the last webinar and some additional timely fiscal topics. Together, we make, can make a difference in serving older adults, adults with disabilities, family caregivers, and residents in long-term care facilities throughout the state. Before we get started, we have a couple general housekeeping items to go over. First, we are muting the phone lines during the presentation. However, we will be providing opportunities after each agenda topic and at the end of the webinar to ask questions. You can type your questions at any time throughout the presentation and we will address them during the following question time period. Also, during each of these question periods, we will open up the phone lines and you can ask your questions verbally by clicking on the raise hand icon to let us know that you have a question. Once we call on you, you can ask your question. Second, these webinars are recorded and archived so you can refer to them on the CDA website at a later date if you would like. Now let's begin with our agenda for today. Today's webinar will focus on the following topics. The area plan contract amendment. We will discuss what is included in the amendment, what is available now, and timing for additional funding in the amendment. One-time only or OTO funding. We will explain what one-time only funding is and how it can be used. Request for funds and expenditure report forms. We will review the recently implemented request for funds and expenditure report forms and consider further improvements to these forms. Area plan transfers. We will ex examine our current transfer process and what it means to you for planning your next transfer. High cap amendment. We will talk about the high cap contract and an anticipated amendment. Upcoming contract due dates. We will share upcoming contract due dates, which include budgets and closeout reporting. Then we will provide an open forum to ask additional questions regarding the items discussed today or any other fiscal concerns or issues you may be facing. And then in closing, we will end with information on how to submit future questions or webinar topics, where to find frequently asked questions, and when to anticipate future webinars. Now let's start with our first topic the area plan amendment. On September 27, 2018, CDA issued the AP 1819 contract amendment. This amendment included funding changes from the original contract, and we want to break down and describe each one. The first adjustment to the funding in the original AP 1819 contract is the addition of the unexpended federal funds based on the final closeout amounts from the AP 1718 contracts. The allocation methodology for these unspent funds is to reallocate up to 5% of each AAA's unexpended funds back to that AAA. Amounts in excess of 5% are reallocated to all AAA's using the interest state funding formula, or the IF, factors. 
The second adjustment to the funding in the original AP 1819 contract is for the transfer request submitted with your original contract budget and is approved by the Administration for Community Living, or ACL. These are not additional funds, but instead funds that have been transferred in the project lines ending 1818 based on the AAA's budgets submitted to execute the original AP 1819 contract. The third adjustment to the funding in the original AP 1819 contract is for the additional Ombudsman state funds received with the passing of the current state budget. AB 1811 changed the Welfare and Institutions Code 9719.5 to increase the Ombudsman program base allocation from $35,000 to $100,000. And as a result, CDA received an additional $2.3 million in general fund for fiscal year 2018-19 and ongoing. You received a planning estimate in August with the amounts to be allocated to your AAA. These additional funds are included under the Ombudsman section as a baseline adjustment. The fourth adjustment to the funding in the original AP 1819 contract is for the supplemental federal funding received in the 2018 final grant award provided to CDA from ACL on September 10, 2018. These funds were allocated to the AAAs using the entire interest state funding formula, if to ensure the minimum matching requirements are met for each AAA. These additional funds were not included in the planning estimate sent to you in August since the notice of award was, was not received until September. The fifth and final adjustment to the funding in the original AP 1819 contract is for the reconciliation of the grant funding. With the original AP 1819 contract was released in April 2018, the contract included a projection of anticipated funding to be received for the grant year 2018. The notice of award for the 2018 grant funding was received on May 21, 2018. Therefore, CDA re reconciled the contract projected amounts with the final grant award received and included the difference in the AP 1819 contract amendment. The funding received in the Notice of Award was allocated to the AAAs using the entire interest state funding formula, if, to ensure the minimum matching requirements are met for each AAA. These additional funds were included in the planning estimate sent to you in August. All of the funds associated with these adjustments are available upon execution of your contract amendment. It is important to note, unlike last year at this time, we have a federal budget that funds our area plan contract and are not operating under a series of continuing resolutions. However, for those AAAs that have SNAP-Ed, we are under a continuing resolution until December 7th. Since we have covered our first agenda item, we will now open up the phone lines for questions. Please either click on the raise hand icon and we will call on you to ask your question or type in your question and we will read it aloud. We're giving everybody a moment maybe to type their questions. As of right now, we haven't received any. Or feel free to click on the raise hand icon and we will call on you and you can ask your question. Okay. Well, it doesn't seem as if we have any questions. So we are going to, I'm going to turn it over to Vern and we'll move on to our next agenda topic. Morning everyone. I'm going to start out talking about one time only. So one time only funding or what we refer to as OTO for short is the unexpended federal funds from a prior contract period. <coughs> Excuse me. These funds are identified after each AAA has completed their closeout and the closeout reports have been reviewed and approved by CDA. 
CDA then reallocates the unexpended federal dollars identified through that closeout to the AAAs in an amendment to the current contract. As just mentioned, when we were talking about the current area plan amendment, the allocation methodology for these unspent funds is to reallocate up to 5% of each AAA's unexpended funds back to that AAA. Amounts in excess of 5% are reallocated to all AAA's using the interstate funding formula factors, or IF. OTO funds are non-transferable between funding sources. This means that OTO funds can only be used in the program in which they were allocated. These funds are not available on an ongoing basis, thus are to be used for one-time only purposes, and any use of OTO should not create an expectation of continued services. <clears throat> So now let's talk about the uses of OTO. So according to Title 22 CCNR Section 7314, OTO funds shall only be used for the following purposes. Purchase of equipment that enhances the delivery of services to the eligible population. All equipment purchases require CDA approval, whether purchased with OTO funds or baseline funds. Home and community-based projects that are approved in advance by CDA and are, are designed to address the unmet needs of the eligible service population identified in the area plan. Next is innovative pilot projects that are approved in advance by CDA and are designed for the development or enhancement of a comprehensive and coordinated system of services <coughs> to obtain prior approval for home and community-based service projects and innovative pilot projects, complete and submit a one-time only CDA 1031 form. OTO funds can be used to maintain or increase baseline services. However, AAA shall ensure that services funded with OTO will not create an expectation of service delivery beyond the current contract period. Expenditures for baseline services do not require advanced CDA approval. Now that we've covered our second agenda item, we'll once again open up the phone lines. Please either click on the raise hand icon and we will call on you, ask your question or type your question and we'll read it aloud. Looks like we have no questions, so we're gonna. I'm gonna turn it back over to Janine and move on to the next topic. Okay, forms change process. So during the October 2017 CDA Fiscal Connections webinar, we discussed our request for funds and expenditure reporting forms and asked for your input to help improve these forms. Specifically, we discussed splitting the form into two or in other words, capturing the request for funds separate from the expenditure reporting. CDA was interested in this option because the combined forms did not work easily in the current environment with the new statewide accounting system known as FISCAL. CDA considered all the feedback we received during the webinar discussions when developing the updated forms. Then, in April 2018, CDA Fiscal Connections webinar, we provided a summary of the new forms, highlighted the changes, and provided an example of each of the new forms demonstrating the new functionality. And beginning in July 2018, at the start of the new fiscal year, we began using the new request for funds and expenditure reporting forms. Now, in this webinar, since these new forms have been in place for about three months, we would like to ask you how they are working, but more importantly, if you have any suggested improvements. However, before we open up the phone lines to hear your suggestions, we're going to review the summary slide from the April 2018 webinar to ensure everyone is familiar with the changes under discussion. First, we separated the RFF and the expenditure reporting. 
effective July 1, 2018, the request for funds and expenditure report became separate forms for all programs with the exception of SNAP-Ed, which is 100% reimbursement. With this change, we hope to minimize confusion, offer agencies some flexibility when submitting the different reports, and meet CDA's operational processing needs. During the October 2017 webinar, we, we, when we discussed splitting the forms, we received a request to eliminate the need for completing the RFF form for those AAAs on a reimbursement payment method. While we are not able to do that at this time, we will continue to look into the possibility in the future. Second, as we shared with you during the July 2017 CDA Fiscal Connections webinar, the CDA Payment Process Improvement Project identified one of the top three errors which caused payment delays was incorrect addresses. As a result, we added functionality to the new form so that they auto-populate the AAA's address based on the selection of the PSA number. The form also auto-populates with the appropriate contract number based on the selection of the fiscal form or fiscal year. Third, we eliminated the area plan workbook. During the April webinar, we explained how the area plan workbook will no longer be used as it combined expenditures and requests for funds. Rather, Title III and Title VII expenditures will continue to be reported in CARS and area plan NSIP and Ombudsman Special Fund expenditures are reported using the CDA 189. The Area Plan Request for Funds, or CDA 150, will be used for requesting funds for all Area Plan programs. Both the CDA 150 and the CDA 189 are to be emailed to the fiscal team at aging.ca.gov email box similar to all other forms. And then the final change related to the forms that we discussed during the April 2018 CDA Fiscal Connections webinar was to clarify when expenditure reports are due. And then we went over a sample RFF form and a sample expenditure report form in detail. So now that we have recapped the form changes recently implemented, we are going to open up the phone lines and ask for your input for suggested improvements please either click on the raise hand icon and we will call on you to ask your question or give your feedback, or type in your question or feedback and we will read it aloud. Carling Loop, would you like to go ahead and ask your questions? like uh, Carling typed in her question. Some forms are due the 30th or last business day, possibly the 31st. Which is the standard? They're, they're due on the 30th of the month, of each month. No later than the 30th. Okay, that looks like all of our questions, so I'm going to turn it back to Vern and we'll move on to our next agenda topic. Okay, with the uh, upcoming uh, budget revision, we're going to talk about the area plan transfers process. So during our April 2018 CDA Fiscal Connections webinar when we shared with you the constraints related to the timing of transfers taking into consideration the state's budget process and ACL requirements. We also discussed the timing of the various budgets and how we will use each of them for processing payments. So to refresh everyone's memory about the various budgets and the timing of the transfers, let's take a moment to walk through this again. So it starts with the budget display in the original contract. This budget is consistent with the state budget authority. Then we have the AAA budget 
submitted to execute the original contract. This budget may include 12 months of transfers. However, only the first three months of transfers are available for requesting funds, and the other nine-month transfers are merely for planning purposes until March after ACL approval is obtained. And we have the budget display for the contract amendment. This budget will include transfers for the first three months, supplemental federal funds, the reconciliation of grant funding and OTO, as Janine talked about earlier. The next will be the AAA budget submitted to execute the contract amendment. This budget will include, may include 12 months of transfers. However, only the first three months of transfers continue to remain available for requesting funds. The other nine months are merely for planning purposes until March after ACL approval is obtained. You may also have additional transfer, request additional transfers at that time. Uh, the next would be the AAA optional January 15th budget. This is new, which includes the last opportunity to transfer funds, and that would be nine months only. And in, in final would be uh, the optional April 30th budget, which would not include any transfers. Based on the timing of the ACL approvals, we must operate under certain budgets for authorizing payments. This is best displayed uh, in this visual. As shown here, July through September, payments will be made based on the AAA budget submitted for the original contract. For October through February, payments will be based on the CDA contract amendment budget display. And then for the March through June period, payments will be based on the AAA budget submitted for the contract amendment or the optional January 15th or April 30th budgets. It should include all transfers that were approved at that point. So something for AAAs to consider when, when uh, looking at their transfers. Based on the timing of transfers just discussed, it's important for the AAA to keep in mind that currently the three-month transfers have been approved by ACL and are included in the 1819 Amendment Budget Display. These funds are available for your use in the three-month period July through September. The remaining nine-month transfers identified in either the 1819 Amendment Budget or the optional January 15 Budget will be submitted to in February to ACL for approval. This means that upon approval, CDA can make payments in accordance with either of those budgets, the amendment or January 15th budget as appropriate, which will include your total request for transfer. CDA anticipates this will be for those payments being made in March 2019 and thereafter. Just for clarification, this is not to be confused with your March request for funds if you are on an advanced basis. Okay, now that we've covered our fourth agenda item, we'll once again open up the phone lines for questions. Please either click on the raise hand icon, we'll call on you, or type in your question and we'll read it aloud. Okay, no questions, so I'm going to turn it over to Dale Carota, and we'll move on to the next topic. Okay, good morning. Uh, we wanted to discuss the upcoming amendment to the high cap contract, including funding allocations and some contract language changes. First, the funding allocations. The HI-1718 contract was for three years, three state fiscal years. Based on that, we've identified $544,409 of federal funds that were not expended as of June 30th, 2018, based on your expenditure reports. CDA will be processing adjustments to reduce 
the state year 1718 allocation and increase the state fiscal year 2018 19 allocation for the amount of federal funds each agency did not expect. Additionally, we've reconciled the Administration for Community Living ACL Notice of Grant Award for 2018 and identified additional funding of $131,328. CDA will include the allocation of these additional funds in this amendment. Finally, in the original contract, CDA did not include funding for the final quarter of the contract. This is the period April 1st, 2020 to June 30th, 2020. The current grant ends on March 31st, so this amendment, this amendment will include an estimate for the final quarter of the contract period. By including this estimate, estimated funding now, area agencies will be better able to plan for fiscal year 1920. The table provided here summarizes the overall federal funding by each grant year. As shown, CDA continues to use the same, es same estimate for federal year 2019. Uh, we do have some contract changes. Uh, in addition to amending the HICAP HI-1718 contract for the additional funding, we have some contract language changes as well. Typically, we do not make contract language changes in a contract amendment. But since this contract is a three-year term and we must, amend, we must amend it for the additional funding, we are taking this opportunity to update the contract. First, Exhibits B and D will be updated to be consistent with all other CDA contracts. So the high cap contracts Exhibit B and D will be the same as your current area plan contracts, AP 1819. Second, Exhibits A and E will be updated with specific high cap changes as a result of new grant requirements for consist consistency with the high cap program manual and to add language that to the extent feasible, funds must be expended in the current fiscal year. A detail of each contract language change will be included in the summary of changes document released with the contract amendment. Now that we've covered our fifth item, we will once again open up the phone lines for questions. Please click or raise the hand icon and we will call on you or ask your question or type in your question and we will read it aloud. Okay, we did have a, a question come in in regards to transfers. Um, so the question is from Mike Sullen, are you saying that the nine month transfers cannot be requested until March, which means in May? That's correct, although it should be, it should be April because we'll be processing in March, we'll be processing your April request for funds, but that would be the earliest month that those funds will be moved where you, your transfers were requested. Great question. Uh, any other questions? Please remember to raise your hand using the raise your hand icon or type in your question. Okay. So, if there are no more questions, we'll, we will move on to our next agenda topic. This table displays all the upcoming contract due dates. As shown here, the Area Plan 1819 Amendment 1 budget is due to CDA by October 26th. And the MIPA MI-1718 contract closeout is due to CDA by October 29th. And as just discussed, the high cap 1718 amendment is anticipated to be released in mid-November, which will mean the budget for that amendment will be due 30 days after the amendment is released. As a reminder, all appropriate CDA forms can be found on the CDA website. And if you have any additional questions regarding the budget or contract closeout forms or need technical assistance with completing either of them, please contact your respective program fiscal team analyst. 
So this brings us to a time for general questions or open forum discussion. As before, please either click on the raise hand icon, we'll call on you to ask your question, or type in your question and we'll read it aloud. So we have a question from Mike Sullivan. Uh, do we need to submit a MIPA month end for September or just the closeout? Yes, you need to submit the an expenditure report for September. Uh, looks like we have a question from Lito Murillo. Hold on while we unmute your line. Lito, go ahead. Lito, did you have a question you wanted to ask? Yes, I had a question going back to the area plan transfer. Okay. Yes, I wanted to find out, we received, this is my first time um, working with this um, amendment process, but for baseline adjustments, are you saying that the contractors or providers should not be reporting any increases that they have received until, I guess, March? Or can they begin invoicing for the increases that they are receiving from uh, the first month that they are approved? So the funding, funding that's allocated as outline adjustment is available as soon as you execute your contract your contract amendment. So those funds are will be immediately available because what we were speaking to were more of the transfers that aren't going to be available until your April request for funds. But once your contract is executed, those baseline adjustments are all available to you. Thank you. Is that it? Okay. Sarah Alberti, do you want to go ahead with your question? Hi, yes. Um, there was a lot of information in the high cap uh, segment of the um, presentation, and I'm wondering how how soon this might be posted to the website so we could go back and review it, or if PSAs are going to get a copy of the presentation emailed. So we post the all the webinars as quickly as we can. Um, we do have to, for accessibility, go through and have the um, our conversations all typed up so that they could be read by a screen reader. So it does take about a week, has been our past practice. So I would anticipate a posting within the next week or so. Okay, perfect. Thank you. Uh, we have an additional question uh, typed in from Yolanda Prado. If we have no expenditures for the month of September, do we still need to submit a September, September expenditure report, or will the closeout be sufficient to cover the last time period? You should submit a zero report. Easy to complete. We have a question from Marion Orr. Are all baseline adjustments funding ongoing? Um, so in the area plan, baseline adjustments, are they all ongoing? 
ak budete ich zapíšené, to sa pomenú. Funds are allocated based on federal grant, or the original contract is allocated based on federal grants. So transfers are not automatically incorporated for the future. Every year we start over at the federal grant levels. But we're anticipating the same funding level. We anticipate the same yeah. funding, but it, there are slight variations due to the federal formula. I guess so here, let, we're, we're actually brainstorming our response here. So maybe let me try to recap. Um, and we get our federal funding based on the federal budget. So we have to wait until the federal budget is passed to know what really is our next year's funding. So when you ask, is it ongoing, Technically, no, because we have to wait for the federal budget to be passed. But practically, likely yes, because we are, an, we are anticipating our federal funds to be at the same level as we are currently in your baseline. We actually anticipate a slight increase because ACL received $10 million more, I believe, in nutrition. Okay, and, but a slight increase for us. There so, is one other piece to that we should take into consideration, and please Dale jump in if if you're a, you know a better verse in this. But because we had a late federal award, the eighteen eighteen funding is an increase for the entire grant year, which will not look the same in the future year because it's only going to be a three month portion of that. But I believe the, the nine month portion would be, would be similar with the exception of, you know, increases. Do you need to add anything to that, Dale? I mean, federal funding is consistent from Fed 18 to Fed 19 at this point. So if someone were to plan or want to plan, they could take their 1819 line items? This is a question for Dale. It, it, we included the, all of the increase for Fed 18 and a, a conservative estimate for 19. The federal government maintained the same funding level for 19, which means the baseline is still the same, but we still have some additional funds left over from 19. So it, it will be slightly less than this current Amendment 1 allocation, but it, will, it should be fairly close. So did that answer you? Excuse me, did that answer your question? When, when we get a grant award, we can actually start, maybe get way ahead of the curve and run some numbers and show you at least totals. Um, Mary and Vice, I've answered your question. Okay, thank you. Uh, we have a couple more questions, but I want to provide clarification on a previous question from Charlene Luck in regards to forms and when they're due. We do have numerous forms, and the, and the due dates vary based on the type of form it is. For example, a budget uh, that would fluctuate 30 days from when we release the contract to closeouts, and you can find the closeout due date on our program memos. But I'll speak to expenditure reports and whether it be due the 30th or the 30th, 31st of the day of the month. Uh, obviously, the 30th wouldn't work in February. Uh, so as per area plan contract, the contractor shall permit, prepare, and submit monthly expenditure reports in electronic format no later than the last business day of each month or as specified by CDA. So if the last business day of the month is the 31st, that's when it would be due. If the 31st falls on a weekend, you would want to turn it in on the Friday prior prior to the 31st, and so that would be the, the due date for that report in essence, because uh, there would be no one here to accept it in essence on Saturday or Sunday. So moving forward to some additional written questions, uh, Kim Crabtree at PSA 33 has a question concerning the OMBI funding. 
Uh, on the letter of intent award, it states that uh, OMB program will receive an increase from 35,000 to 100,000. Our allocation was only 61,744 for the state funding. Is this verbiage in the award letter incorrect, or does it mean that we'll receive funding annually up to $100,000? You know what, on that one, since it's specific, can we take this offline and um, what PSA is this? 33. 33? Okay. Somebody from CDA will call call you. We'll call you, Kim. And, and walk through that. Uh, next question from Mike Sullen. Since the max funding we request is based on the prior month's expenditures, it may be difficult to request advanced funds until several months after the expenses actually increase. Is there any plan to address this and to adjust the max funds approvable amounts? I, I would think the system is designed to approve advances so you have your initial three months where you have no expenditures reported, and from that point you will you will be limited to the maximum approval based on the expenditures that you're submitting. However, if you have an increased need that the expenditure reports don't account for, then you can always send a request explaining that need, and then we can include that in our um, in our ability to override the maximum approval. But you'll need to document why you would be asking to exceed that amount. And it's important to note that your actual maximum approval, what is actually paid out in advance, is one and a half times that maximum approvable amount, which is based on actual expenditures. So it, it will take in to affect the increased expenditures once they kick in, but until they kick in, you're still getting one and a half times the lower level of expenditures. Uh, next question uh, from Anna Salorma. Can baseline adjustment amounts received for C1 and C2 programs be reallocated? Example, home delivered meals are needed more than congregate meals by a contractor and they would like to shift meals. Yes, the baseline funding is allowed to be transferred. So that you would include that in your Amendment 1 budget. These are some really great questions. Thank you. Very good discussion. I think, though, we might have come to an end of the questions. Can you give a minute. Do we have any more questions? No. Okay, then if there are no more questions, we are going to close. In closing, we hope you have a better understanding of area plan funding and the contract amendment, including one-time only funding and the timing of transfers. We appreciate um, feedback on the forms, although we didn't get any during this discussion, but if you're always more than welcome to send any improvement suggestions uh, to us and we will consider them for incorporating into our processes. We want to make sure all your questions get answered. If you think of a question later, or if we are we're unable to thoroughly answer your question during today's webinar, please email cda.accounting at aging.ca.gov 
and the appropriate CBA team member will reply. We will continue to capture the questions and answers in our Frequently Asked Questions page on the CBA internet. These FAQs can be found on the AAAS page of CDA's website where you currently access all your contracts, budgets, and program memos. But before we end, we want to let you know that we are planning our future quarterly CDA Fiscal Connections webinars as usual with the next webinar in January 2019. When, and we will send out an email with the registration link as the web, webinar date gets closer. However, we are also scheduling a special CDA Fiscal Connection webinar devoted entirely to the intranet funding formula, the IF. And that one will be scheduled for December 11th. So it will be a special one-off webinar from our normal quarterly webinars, and it will be devoted specifically to the IF. So look forward to receiving the webinar invite and some materials to print out and review prior to this webinar. Please remember to keep your contact information current through submitting the agency contact designation form CDA 045 form so we can stay connected. Thank you for attending today's webinar. We hope you found the discussions informative and valuable. We will be uploading the webinar recording to the AAA page on the CDA website for you to access in the future. In fact, all CDA Fiscal Connection webinars are posted on the CDA website for your reference when needed. The audio portion of this webinar is now ending. If you have additional comments or questions, you may send them to cda.accounting.aging.ca.gov. Also, you will be receiving an email with your, our post-webinar survey. Please take a moment to give us feedback on today's session and provide topics for future sessions. Thank you for your time and commitment, and enjoy the rest of your day. Muted.